Hi, my name is Ian Shepard. I take care of the CRM 360 and online appointment features inside of the software. This is a excerpt from a video that I recorded in April of 2021 uh, based on the full uh, basic configuration and walkthrough of the online appointment feature. This is just an excerpt uh, just for the uh, portion that takes place uh, between the customer and the shop. From there, um, I'm going to just jump right into it. So let me just copy this address and I'm going to go into a, 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 to a browser here and paste the form. So let's just bring this over here. So let me know. Yeah, you should be able to see that there. So let's just pretend that this is a customer. So I'm a customer. Let me just enter my information. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip my contact details just to, to show something uh, as we go along here. So let's just type in um, something here and 2011, okay. And let me type in test. And when I click select a date, you'll see that I get an error. Please provide a phone number or an email address to contact you. And the reason for that is, is I get often questions, um, how come we can't force um, let's say the collection of a cell phone or an email address. Well, due to the Privacy Act, we can't demand one type of contact, but we can ask for at least one in order to get a date. So I can enter my information here and I'm gonna actually enter my actual uh, details. And let's enter my email address here. And I'm gonna select a date and let's cho choose the 30th of April and I'm gonna choose 4 p.m. and I'm going to click on request appointment. Okay, so the first thing that the customer sees is this uh, notification or acknowledgement within the browser. So it says here, here are the details of your request. Please note your service appointment is not guaranteed until confirmed by our service advisor. Thank you for using our online system. It provides all of the details, but from within this screen, let's say me as the customer, I'm looking at scheduled time and I see Friday, I say, oops, I meant to actually select Thursday. I can click edit appointment and then everything that I previously entered, including any services that may I may have selected is uh, repopulated here for me. I don't have to retype any of the information and then I can simply select a date again. Okay, I'm not gonna do that for this example, but just know that I can certainly do that if I need to. Okay, so in the background, what's happened? Let me just go over to my email here. I've actually already received a notification or an acknowledgement. So it's really a duplicate of the browser version. Again, here are the details of your request. Please note your service appointment is not guaranteed until confirmed by our service advisor. I'm presented with the details of my, uh, my request. And if I want, again, I can make changes. It's all built in, okay? So now here's what's happened in the software for the shop owner. OK, if you were part of the online appointment notification message group, then you would have likely received a pop up here. Now, let me just bring this up here. I don't see it here because I'm not part of that message group. But this is essentially where that re request will come in. You can click on it. It'll be bring you over to the work in progress screen where that record is sitting. Um, whether you see it here or perhaps it's in the top right, bottom right, depending on how you have your message center configured, but essentially it's a quick way to receive a notification. So let me just show you where this is actually sitting in the software. So if you click on the home tab and then click on work orders, you'll see work in progress. There is a temporary folder called pending appointments. And this stays here. If this is actually collapsed, you'll actually see that it shows the number of requests that are sitting in there. Okay, so if I just open this up, the only thing that really matters is opening up this record at this point. So let me double click on this. It'll pop up. You'll notice that this record is no different than any other record sitting on this screen. What's unique, however, it does identify as an online appointment and by default, it is not confirmed. Okay. So if you're looking at this screen and you're looking at my contact information here, and let's say for whatever reason you don't serve as a Kia Sorento. So you're wondering, okay, well, how do I get in touch with this customer? I've never dealt with this customer before. I need to get in touch with them. So if you click on the binoculars, 
Let me just bring this up. It's just opening up another screen. You'll see that all of the information that I provided sits here on the bottom left. If I was an existing customer, I'd likely be listed here on the right hand side and I'd have the ability to link the two or as a brand new customer from within the screen, I can click on add contact and I'm also presented with the option to create a, a new contact record with the information that was provided. Okay, so we don't need to do any of these steps right now. I'm just showing you that these are available. Also, when the customer is in front of you on the day of the appointment, you can convert this to a work order and any services that were selected on that request will be brought forward. So that just saves you some time. But the only thing that's required in this case is let's say you can accommodate my request, everything is good. You look at the date and time, yes, this works. So the only thing that matters is checking this box, this appointment is confirmed and clicking okay. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that the pending appointment um, folder goes away. And now I'm sitting here at the bottom under future work right down here. Okay, so let's just go into my inbox again. Just give me one second and let me bring that up. There we go. Okay, so here is the appointment confirmation email that I just received. So since the shop, we just confirmed it as a shop, me now as a customer, it says here, your appointment has been confirmed. Here are the details. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I still have the ability to make changes if I want to. I can update the appointment from here. I'll, I'll be presented with uh, an option to change the date as well, okay? So now that's all I can show you uh, live. Let me just show you the rest of it in, in software. So there's a couple of other templates that we need to look at. The next one is this reminder email, which is the appointment reminder. This actually is generated two days ahead and then the day before. So I had selected the 30th. So on the 29th of April, I would receive an email that basically looks like this. Again, very similar. Just a reminder, here are the details of your service appointment. And I'm presented with all the details. But now I'm given two options as the customer. I can either confirm my appointment or I can reschedule. Okay. So rescheduling is the same thing that you saw in all of the previous emails and notifications on the browser, I have the ability to reschedule right from within the email. Okay, but we're presented as the customer, we're presented with another option called confirm. So if I click on this confirm button, I'm, a new page pops up and the customer has the ability to then confirm that appointment. Now, I would say 99% of the time, the shop, you as the shop owner would have probably already confirmed this appointment. And so therefore this really doesn't do anything other than provide peace of mind to the customer. Okay, so if you've confirmed it and that's typically what you're supposed to do, customer clicks confirm, nothing really changes in the software. It just, the customer realizes that they could confirm. Now there is a 1% chance that this may pose a problem, but we don't see this happen very often. But let's say for example, a customer books an appointment at 11.30 p.m. on a Friday. And let's say you're not open until Monday morning at 8 a.m. Well, on Saturday, if they've booked that online, they're gonna get this email. Now, likely because you're not in the shop, you haven't had an opportunity to confirm that for the customer. So when they click on confirm here, they're in fact confirming their own appointment. So that's a rare occurrence, but just know that that is a possibility. So there's a possibility that that could happen. But for the most part, it's just their peace of mind for the customer, just, just so that they realize that they're confirming their own appointment. Okay, so that's about it with that. And there's one other message in here called error page. So I do know that um, some shops that I work with, when they have appointments for the day, whether they're in the morning or the afternoon, a lot of times what happens is uh, all of the appointments that are booked early they actually convert them to work orders so that they're ready for when the customer comes in, okay? So in doing so, the minute you convert an appointment into a work order, that appointment can no longer be changed. So for example, we've got this error page here. If I click on edit just to preview it, within the browser, if a customer tries to reschedule an appointment that's already been converted to a work order, they're gonna get this message. Oops, there was a problem with your request. Please contact us directly to book or reschedule your service appointment. Here's the phone number, here's our email address. We look forward to seeing you. So it's just letting the customer know that whatever they attempted to do with that rescheduling did not happen and you're asking them to call or email you. 
okay? This could also happen, for example, if you've ever been on a website, let's say you're filling out a form and let's say you get distracted, you kind of go away for 30 minutes and then you come back and you finish the form, you hit submit. A lot of times you'll get like an error or a timeout or something to that effect. Well, this too will also pop up if that happens. Of course, the availability uh, on the scheduler is constantly refreshing. So if it goes beyond that time that it's refreshed, then this error could pop up. Ultimately, this is just designed to make sure that your customer is aware that that communication did not happen in that instance. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So the last thing I wanted to cover is keep in mind that when we're looking at the scheduler, it's looking at every 60 minutes, it's allowing for two online appointments with a total of three total appointments, including appointments booked in software, and a total of 10 per day, okay? Now, because not every shop uses the scheduler the same way, the challenge is how do we allow customers or how do we allow um, the shop to make exceptions? Let's say they know for sure that they're fully booked. How can we block off time if there's still time slots available? So if I go over to the scheduler here, we'll look at, let's see what, what comes up. Well, this, this is a demo database, so there's not a lot of information. But right now, if we look at Friday, it says that there's 18 hours available. Well, the online appointment feature does not look at the available hours because not every shop uses the scheduler this way. Instead, it looks at each individual booking interval. So in this case, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. And then in the case of what we, what we uh, use as an example, we skipped 12 to 1, then it would go 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that being said, each one of these time slots would have two online appointments available and a total of three appointments. Okay, so let's say, for example, you had 20 appointments booked at 8 a.m. for drop-offs. Well, likely, I don't know for sure, but likely that's a pretty full day. And if that is a full day, you still have 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3 still available. So additional appointments would be allowed in the scheduler. But perhaps you're booked for the day. So what you want to do is you want to go into what they call the schedule overview and make what they call an exception. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the home tab. We're going to click on setup again. And then under setup, I'm going to type in scheduler. Okay, and as you can see, scheduler comes up. We've got the holidays, we've got shop hours, and then we've got schedule overview. So when I click on schedule overview, when I click on schedule overview, you'll see that I'm presented with the calendar. So let's say, for example, this upcoming Friday, you know that you're booked solid. You can't possibly take any more online appointments. Well, you can click on the 16th, go down to action, click add. Now you can either choose to choose a time range or you can say that you're fully booked and type in a note, no more appointments. In doing so, it blocks off that day. Now, let's say a customer calls you and like to book an appointment for Friday the 16th. Well, whenever you try to book in software, it'll actually prompt you to say that it says that you're fully booked. However, because you're in software, you have the ability to override. However, there will not be any availability on Friday online. Okay, so a lot of times what I, where I see people using this, how shops are using this is, let's say for example, it's 5 p.m. Let's say today it's 5 p.m. on the 12th of April when I'm recording this, and you're looking at your next day and you know that you couldn't possibly take any more appointments for the next day. Well, at the end of the day, of the current day, they're going to the next day and they're saying that they're fully booked. But if you're not fully booked, you can leave it open and allow for additional appointments overnight uh, to fill up your day. Okay, so hopefully that helps. This allows you to utilize this and, and to manage your schedule uh, for those that are starting to use the online appointment function.